I was fortunate enough to play rugby from a very young age and um, yeah, to, to make a career out of rugby to be honest. Um, for Even though my career was extremely uh, short lived, I had a massive knee injury that you know, sort of um, hampered my career and my, and my progress. But uh, nonetheless, I had a, a rugby career that, that lasted five years. And from there, I built up a rugby network and a network of people that I touched base with um, once my career had come to an end in order to, um, you know, to sort of, to further um, uh, making money and, and further, um, obviously, you know, going into business and, and so forth. And uh, fortunately enough, Ebox Advanced Nutrition at the time, um, I got in touch with them and I was had a very close relationship with them, being sponsored by them. Um, through my rugby career and um, I ended up working at Strategic Media which um, uh, obviously manages the brand of Evox and um, from there I, I went on to to um, you know learn lots of the business industry something I think that us as sportsmen don't get enough of um, you know obviously through our rugby careers and um, being someone that studied but didn't put enough emphasis on my studies I really had nothing back to fall back on and I think um, I was extremely grateful to Evox at the time to, to have given me the opportunity and um, yeah, I mean, my, my rugby career really helped me boost um, my my business um, boost. You know, today still I, I'm involved in business and, 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 my, and I think it's through my rugby um, connections that I've made through the years that I'm fortunate enough to, to be able to have a sustainable business both, um, you know, away from rugby and still being involved um, in rugby through Good Rugby TV, um, being involved in doing sports presenting for Good Up FM and then also um, owning a gym uh, called The Head Club, which... Um, has all stemmed from relationships which I built through my um, connections of rugby. You know, moving from being an athlete into um, into the service industry, it hasn't been easy. I must be honest. There are lessons that we can take from being uh, professional rugby players into the service industry, but it hasn't been an easy one. And I think it has taken me. Um, some time to really adapt to the to, to, to the life, you know, off uh, sort of away from the four white lines, and um, you know I think it's lessons like um, commitment, you know, staying um, focused to the cause. You know I think um, you know often we too easily give up, and I think being a rugby player, you know, there's always competition coming your way, and in the service industry, there's always competition. There's always hurdles which need to be overcome, and I think rugby has really taught me to to stick to the plan, really, um, you know, put in the effort and. And I think with the amount of work you put in, you, you do reap the rewards. So, you know, when it comes to service industry, you really got to make sure that the lessons you learn from the sport, um, you put back, you plow back into um, into your into, into your life after rugby, uh, especially in the industry of providing a service for customers, for clients, for client relations, and so forth. There are a number of challenges which exist when trying to forge a career outside of the four white lines, as I like to put it. And I think, you know, you need to know that as an athlete, even whilst playing, you need to put in the building blocks in order to to make sure that you have a life after rugby. And I think it's very important that we don't take that for granted. You know, a rugby career lasts all of 10 years if you're lucky enough. And if you don't have things to fall back on, you need to work for at least 30 to 40 years of your life in order to, to, to really be able to sustain to sustain a family and a healthy lifestyle. And, you know, 10 years of that is only a very small part of your life in, in business. And I think, you know, players really need to make sure that they're putting those places, those um, connections, they're making the right connections, they're putting the right, um, uh, like I say, building blocks in place in order to have a career after, after sport, uh, whatever their sport may be. And, um, yeah, fortunate, fortunately enough, I was able to do that. But it hasn't been an easy transition. And um, it really is something that, um, you know, I wish I had actually paid more attention to whilst playing rugby. You know, being a rugby player, you always are, you're always answering to a head coach or to the board or the, to the committee. And I think the advice that I would give players, um, you know, leaving the game and, and wanting to make a career is, you know, you've got to, you've really got to, to take the ball, take the bull by the horns, um, so to say. You know, you've got to take the risks that, that need to be taken. You know, I, th I do, I, I tend to say you've got to do that earlier, uh, you know, earlier in your, in your life rather than later when you have more responsibilities. But take the risks that are out there. You know, it's not going to be easy. You go from seeing money come into your account as opposed to, 
one day owning your own business where you pay everybody else and pay yourself last. But uh, it's challenges that you're going to face. And I think the big message for me is to not get despondent. You know, keep working hard. Keep taking the, the learnings from your sport which made you successful. Keep taking those learnings and applying them back into your business, whatever the field it may be. And um, I think the most important message for me is stick to the task at hand, you know. Focus on little jobs at a time and really, you know, what you put in, you will you will get out. And, um, you know, from a, in a rugby career, it may not have been like that for most of you. You know, I think a lot of players put in the hard work and don't necessarily get selected. Whereas once you go into the business arena, I can guarantee you now, the amount of hard work you put in is definitely um, what you will reap, um, the rewards you will reap in the long run. I like this question. I think it's a, it's a very it's a it's a question that I that I I've, I've, I've built my my whole life on, and it's well, a very simple answer through the fact that I think you know I live by the motto of hard work beats talent unless talent works hard, and I think that in the business uh, in your business life and in your sporting life, I think if you put in the hard work, you know it will beat any talented individual out there. And whether that be on the rugby field, you put in the hard work, you will be selected ahead of somebody more talented than you. And the same in the business, in the service industry or in the business world for that matter. If you put in the hard work, I have no doubt you will beat someone who may have had better marks than you at school, better marks than you at university. As long as you put in the hard work, I have no doubt that it beats the talent that exists out there in the world. So hard work beats talent and less talent works hard. Um, obviously, the major challenges which exist when having, you know, when playing socially still and having a business is, is time. You know, time is time is money in the business world, and uh, it's a massive challenge which exists out there. But um, for me, um, you know, still playing socially is my break away from from the office, from the computer, from the staff issues which you may have from the business environment, and um, that's the big reason why I still continue to, to play socially is just to have that, you know that freedom to go out there and, and just express myself on the rugby field as opposed to in, inside the office which is a lot more strict rules, a lot more stringent in terms of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. I take um, that, I sort of take that hat off and I put on my sociable, you know, throw the ball around, express yourself, do whatever you like approach um, to the rugby field and I think that is the major challenge which, which exists is, is being too, you know, you, I believe you have to balance out your life and if you're not finding a balance, I think you, you will you'll eventually you will get stale in whatever environment it may be. So, you know, I, the, the challenge will be is, is time, but if you can overcome the time barrier and manage your time correctly, then I see no reason why you shouldn't be going out there and still enjoying your life alongside the fact that you're working hard day in and day out. It's a very simple one for me, you know, in terms of the transition that you'll make. Always remember that um, your career or your sport doesn't make who you are. It is just a skill that you happen to have that has, has paid your bills for a number of years. So I think it's important that the transition is very easy if you stay humble during your sport. As soon as you let your sport get your head, I think it becomes a very different um, scenario. So, you know, to answer the question, in a very simple matter is I think stay humble during your sport work hard you know um, and, um, and don't take it for granted because you know in any sport you play it can be taken away for you in the, in the glimpse of an eye so just make sure you stay humble and uh, work hard and um, you take those two traits into your business life thereafter I don't see how you can have a problem